Hello everyone, I am Vikram P. Maduri here. Welcome to JH Softtech. And in this session, I am going to give you some very basics of ALE IDOCs. What exactly is ALE and what is IDOC with a simple example of with which we can understand the concept of ALE and concept of IDOC and what exactly is the difference. So let's start off with the basics. To understand this scenario, I am taking an example of uh, you know uh, two buildings. Let's say you have your home at uh, building A and you have your office at uh, building B. And if you would like to go from building A to building B, uh, you need to directly walk from building A to building E. Uh, we, we are building a bridge. Okay, let's say let's assume that we are building a bridge now. Once you build a bridge from system uh, building A to building B, you, you will be able to walk from building A to building B. Now, taking that example, now what exactly happens in ALE? Why, why do we use ALE is to get the data from SAP to non-SAP and non-SAP to SAP systems. So, we have SAP to non-SAP communications. Now, let's take an example of you know, we uh, we being a car manufacturing company, and we'd like to send some information to the tire manufacturing company, who happens to be our vendor. And when you let's say you have to create a purchase order and send it to the vendor, that is where you know ALE IDOCs comes into picture. So to exchange the data and any concept which is actually interacting with SAP and non-SAP systems is called company. Uh, I'm sorry. So any 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 concept that we use for exchange of data is called cross application. So in the cross applications, we have majorly EDI concept, electronic data interface, which was which was introduced way back before ACP was introduced, and then we have uh, RFC and we have. Uh, ADI docs. So now here we have EDI electronic data interchange, which was which was introduced before before SAP, and we have ALU application linking and enabling, which actually interacts with the non-SAP to SAP, SAP to SAP. So EDI and ALU does more or less the same functionality, but ALU is SAP's proprietary concept. Then we have RFC remote function call for SAP to SAP communications. We mostly use RFC. And then we have the workflow. Now let's go back to the example that we are actually talking about, in which we are actually you know moving from you know building A to building B. So to build to move from building A to building B, the first and first and foremost is the primary thing is the bridge. And when we build the bridge, that bridge is nothing but ALE. So if at all if you want to send data from system A to system B you need to first build a connection between them the bridge that's called ALE application linking and enabling and now, now what exactly is the ALE? ALE is a bridge between the two systems and if at all if it is if the, if the data is exchanged between SAP and non-SAP systems then we need to have an interface and now what's an interface? Interface is like a translator for example one guy is talking in French and another guy is talking in Spanish and you'd like to exchange uh, I mean convert that the conversion will happen through Interface interface is basically uh, something which you know translates um, you know uh, SAP to non SAP non SAP to SAP. Now when when whenever whenever we have a scenario of SAP to SAP conversion, you don't have to you know uh, use interface. Now any system which actually sends the data is called sending system, and it's called the technically it's called outbound system. And the process of sending the data from system A is called outbound process. And receiving system is called inbound system. And the process of you know getting the data and loading into the inbound system is called the inbound process. Now, we we said like you know we have system A, we have system B, we have an interface, and and we have a bridge that's called ALE. It's been done. Now, if at all, if you would like to take lunch box from your from your building A to building B. Now how do you carry it? So most probably the lunch box will be carried in the form of a container. So you 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 keep all the all the food in the container and carry the container and get back the container. 
Now, what exactly is the concept of container? The container actually just carries your food. Similarly, here, IDOC is a container. Now, IDOC is something which actually carries your data internally with uh, inside segments. Now, what are segments? Let's say you are you are you are you are you are, you are packing up uh, your basic food, your, your your basic food and your desserts. You know, and you you have some snacks. All this, uh, all these snacks, desserts, and your 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 basic food. All these things you cannot mix up in, in in one one container. You you have to maintain separate containers in the lunch box so that like you know they don't mix up. So that is what uh, we do in the IDOC as well. Internally within the IDOC we'll have something called segments, and each segment will can have a different type of data altogether. For example, if you take material data, employee data, and payment data, so each one of them is no way related to other other uh, other other data, but still they can be kept in different different segments, and we can patch up everything as an IDOC type. Now the IDOC type is actually the complete container which has the segments in it. Segments are the subdivisions in the IDOC, and internally within the sub within the segment, you will have something called uh, the fields. So material name, material number, material name, etc., etc. Now let's say you are, you you are going to offer so you are taking your container, but what if all your all your colleagues have the same type of type of container for lunch box? Maybe it was gifted by your company. So what you do is to identify your container or the lunch box. You you probably uh, the best solution is to have a tag. With your name, so that like you can identify the moment you see the name, you identify that this is my lunch box. So that tagging of an IDOC happens with the message type. So we basically first create a create segments with all the fields that would that needs to be translated from system A to system B, and then we we bunch it up, and we pair it up in in the IDOC type, and that IDOC type in turn we are going to Uh, tag it to the message type. So we are going to create a message type. So basically, you create a seg segments in SC31 transaction, then the IDOC type in SC30 transaction, and the message type will you are going to create in SC81 transaction. So we are going to you know uh, more detailly discuss about that. But this is the very basic introduction about the ALE IDOC. What exactly is the ALE? It's a process. And what do we have to do from the from a technical, uh, you know, consultant perspective, uh, from an ABAP perspective, or from uh, the basis perspective? What we need to do is we need to configure that ALE process. So we need to configure it, and it's a one-time process of configuring it. So ALE is configured. After ALE is configured, you uh, you have to send the send the data. For so sending the data, you basically have a IDOC and what exactly is an IDOC? IDOC is a container. So you build a container also for, for one time. Okay. So you're not going to create a, a container every day, but you're going to send the data every day. So sending the data has a process that's called outbound process. So basically, we'll have an outbound process and we'll have the inbound process, which I'm going to discuss in detail in the coming session. And thanks for watching this video. It was a short video, and I like uh, I want to discuss the basics of uh, IDOC. And if at all, if you are looking out for more such videos, and you know, expand your knowledge, you can subscribe to our channel YouTube.com/slash/JSoftTech, and do not forget to click on the bell icon so that whenever we upload a new video, uh, a notification comes to you. And if at all, if you are looking out for any kind of SAP trainings or any of the software trainings, you can contact us at info at richjsoftech dot com. And if you are looking out for any kind of materials related to SAP, also you can write to us. And we also have lot of jobs, so if you are looking for SAP jobs, you can contact us at jobs at richjsoftech dot com. Thank you. Have a great day.